In January 2016, Mayor Bill de Blasio announced his intention to phase out the use of cluster housing for the homeless by 2018, but he has since pushed back that deadline to 2021. Dave Sanders for the New York Times For years, New York City has placed thousands of homeless families into so-called cluster or scattersite housing, using private apartments, usually in rundown buildings, as an expensive way to help the city meet its legal mandate to provide shelter to those eligible. Under Mayor Bill de Blasio, the city's reliance on the cluster sites has grown along with the rise in homelessness, which has arguably been the biggest failure of his tenure. Now the mayor is taking a large step toward ending that reliance on Tuesday, Mr. De Blasio is expected to announce a plan to essentially convert many of the homeless apartments into affordable housing, hoping to solve a problem that has worsened over his first term. Under the plan, the city would use public financing to help nonprofits buy roughly a third of the apartments currently used for the homeless and then convert the apartments into affordable units, helping the mayor fulfill two goals lowering homelessness and adding to the city's affordable housing stock. If landlords do not cooperate, the city intends to use eminent domain to take the property, officials said. The planned acquisition involves 800 apartments spread throughout 25 to 30 buildings, mostly in the Bronx, which has the overwhelming majority of cluster apartments in the city. City-targeted buildings where more than 50 percent of the units were occupied by homeless people, a threshold that would guide future acquisitions, the city said. In a statement, Mr. De Blasio said his administration had to think creatively and be bold. We are fast-tracking the transition from shelter to higher quality, permanently affordable housing for New Yorkers caught in the grips of our city's affordability crisis, he said. The planned acquisition could place about 3,000 people into permanent housing. In some cases, homeless families living in the apartments would simply stay put but would no longer be considered homeless. It was not immediately known how much the program would cost the city. The rise in homelessness has been a paradox for Mr. Blasio, a self-described progressive railing against income inequality. An estimated 77,000 people were living in the city's different shelter systems and on the streets in February, according to a count overseen by the Department of Housing and Urban Development. When the mayor took office in January 2014, there were an estimated 68,000, Mr. De Blasio has conceded that he took too long to recognize the homelessness crisis and to outline a strategy that would reverse decades of damage, exacerbated by rising rents, stagnant wages and the loss of affordable housing. The city addressed the problem with short-term fixes, including its reliance on cluster sites. The cluster program began in 2000 under Mayor Rudolph W. Giuliani, with a few hundred apartments. Year after year, the city increased its reliance on the cluster sites, largely because the apartments were the most expedient, least intrusive way to help the city meet its legal mandate to provide shelter to anyone eligible. The clusters drew little community outcry when they opened because, unlike traditional shelters, they were not immediately visible. The apartments are tucked away in mostly decrepit, private buildings, and homeless families have simply blended in with people who are not homeless. A year ago, two young children were killed after a radiator burst in their family's apartment in this building in the Bronx, where the homeless family had been placed to live. Greg Vigliotti for the New York Times under Mr. de Blasio's plan, once the nonprofits purchased the apartments, the units would be subject to regulations that would require them to remain affordable for 30 years. In a way, Mr. de Blasio, a longtime critic of clusters, inadvertently increased the city's dependence on them. Early in his tenure, the mayor asked his administration to slow down on opening new shelters, as elected officials expressed concern to him about shelters materializing in their districts without notification. At the same time, Mr. de Blasio directed his administration to reduce how much the city paid to landlords for the cluster apartments. But without new shelters opening, the city still needed the more discreet clusters. And because of that need, some landlords refused to reduce the prices of apartments. Over the past 17 years, the rents demanded by landlords for clusters have been tantamount to price gouging. The City Department of Investigation released a report two years ago that showed that the city was paying an average $2,451 a month for cluster apartments in poor and working-class neighborhoods where rents ranged from $528 to $1,200 a month. Lucrative circumstances sometimes led landlords to drive out residents who were not homeless just so they could collect the larger payments from the city. Cluster apartments have also posed a danger to those living in them. Last December, the deaths of two toddler sisters renewed calls for the city to move more quickly to get out of clusters.
Silive Ambrose, 1, and Ibanez Ambrose, 2, died after their bedroom filled with scalding steam that spewed from a malfunctioning radiator in the apartment where they lived in a cluster building in the Bronx. But with few alternatives, the city has been stuck with clusters. By January 2016, the number of cluster apartments had ballooned to about 3,650 apartments, with an estimated 11,000 people at its height. Around that same time, the mayor unveiled a plan to phase out the use of clusters by 2018, only to have to push back that deadline to 2021 earlier this year. Getting out of them, the city has found, has meant even more expensive alternatives. Since early 2016, the city has stopped using about 1,000 cluster apartments. But because it had slowed the pace of opening new shelters, the city was forced to place homeless families into even costlier hotel rooms, which cost it about $400,000 a day. Earlier this year, Mr. de Blasio unveiled a 128-page plan to open 90 new shelters and to expand 30 current ones so the city could close the cluster sites and stop booking hotel rooms. There was no mention then of using eminent domain to achieve the goal. But with the city falling short of opening the 18 to 20 shelters it said it wanted to open by March 2018, the city has opened eight new shelters and has announced that three other shelters will be opening soon, it clearly needed a more aggressive tack. Stephen Banks, the city commissioner of social services, said that the city's announcement should make crystal clear that we mean business moving forward on every front to phase out this Giuliani-era stopgap measure once and for all in our effort to better serve homeless New Yorkers and all New Yorkers, he said. The takeover of the buildings could also alleviate concerns of some elected officials and housing advocates who feared abandoning the cluster program wholesale would increase the risk that landlords could turn the apartments, which had once been rent-stabilized, into market-rate ones. The City Department of Homeless Services does not have the authority to make sure landlords are in compliance with rent regulations, but it is working with other agencies, like the State Homes and Community Renewal, to do so. A version of this article appears in print on December 12, 2017, on page A24 of the New York edition with the headline de Blasio seeks to turn homeless cluster sites into affordable apartments.